Disclaimer time. This is where I tell everyone to lighten up. It's just a podcast. Trading is like that roller coaster at the amusement park. Thrilling, unpredictable, and potentially stomach churning. What works for one person might leave another clutching their hat in the wind. Our hosts and guests, they're awesome, knowledgeable, full of insights, but we're not financial advisors. So don't rush to make any investment decisions based solely on our banter. Always consult with a professional or do your own research. Plus, let's face it, we like to have fun, laugh, and enjoy the trading ride together. It's all in the name of good podcasting fun. So remember, take it easy, don't bet the farm, and keep your seatbelts on at all times. Thank you for listening. All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to the China Shop, home of the Band of Traders. I'm your host Kyle, and joining me today is Jason Greystone, investor, forex trader, and the host of the podcast, Always Free. Uh, how are you doing today, Jason? Awesome. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Grayson. Jason. I keep thinking Grayscale every time I see Greystone, <laughs> and it keeps throwing me for a loop because I think of the Bitcoin <laughs> ETF. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's great. Yeah, it's great sorry for the confusion too. The, the eclipse is supposed to be taking place here in about two hours, I think. So I, I think I, I right. panicked for a minute there. I thought I might have scheduled you like right during the event. <laughs> Turns out, like, actually, we're okay. We're okay. I got some time. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to worry about missing the eclipse in the UK because it's just cloud <laughs> all the time. I know. You know we're never, never going to see it. So Right, right. <laughs> Well, uh, before we kick off the conversation, then um, let's get the promotional stuff out of the way. So, Jason, where can people go to find you, learn more about what, you, uh, what you're doing? Uh, yeah, usually I just say, you know, the usual channels, all the socials. Um, unfortunately, we're in the world of trading, so there are a lot of fake accounts trying to snatch a quick buck. Oh, God. Uh, but, but YouTube um, and my podcast, Always Free, that's usually where I send people because I, th- I think they'll get a lot of value from just the podcast you know with, with i love the name too by the way that speaks thanks. to my values thanks man yeah <laughs> try to keep everything as accessible as possible it's definitely an affirmation yeah for sure right right uh okay if anybody listening has any uh, suggestions or corrections or questions for future guests you can send them our way via email band of traders podcast at gmail.com you can join our free discord server or you can dm us on twitter at financial inept one Make sure we have all those links in the episode description so you can check them out at your own convenience. Now that we got all that crap out of the way, let's get to know our <laughs> guest. So Jason, tell me how you got started in the markets. Did you have uh, kind of like the normal path that some of us do? or I guess it was have, uh, uh, a different, unique. Well, I mean, it depends what the normal path is. But over uh, the normal path, I guess, if you're, if you're catering to the, to the masses these days, I mean, trading wasn't as popular back then as it is now. But back then... Um, It was still kind of, there were people attracted to it because it was a a shiny object, you know, a a, a promise of lots of money to be made. Yeah, quick buck. But it, (laughs) I mean, not nowhere near as much as it is now because it it just wasn't, it it Mm -hmm. wasn't around as much as it, or accessible as it is now. But I think that's the key right there. Yeah, accessible. But with, with great accessibility comes great responsibility, right? uh, (laughs) Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's never, it's never been easier right. to make money, but it's never been easier to lose like literally your net worth in a click of a button. So, it, you know, there's a, it's a double-edged sword <laughs> for, for sure. Yeah. You, you, you used to have to try sling penny stocks to do that. Now you got futures and Forex so and many. options yeah. and Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, take your pick, just lose your house. You know, it's, right. it's like, yeah. Um, but I, I approached it in a, a professional way you know although i lost a lot of money initially i um i didn't approach it as a get rich quick i I actually approached it as with a strategic mind that if i can accelerate my returns that i was already getting through investing and things like that um i would be able to replace my active income at some point in the future i just need to speed up uh, you know accelerate the returns a little bit i need and, and in order to accelerate my returns I need to speculate a little bit higher. And it wasn't actually Forex trading that I got into initially. It was it was initially um, poker, online poker. And I was looking at that. Oh, yeah. really? And, and um, then I went from that to options. And then I went from options to, to Forex. And Forex was, was kind of where I found my groove, I guess, um, after a That's, lot of money. That is a interesting path but actually i think i got my start probably more in poker and investing right too actually now that i think about it like i really took a high level interest in poker uh, right out of high school like right. actually like had logs and was trying to like make a real yeah. go out of it yeah uh options i was terrified of them yeah. for most of my life it wasn't until <laughs> I still am about three years ago i started to think like you know maybe there's something right. to this. <laughs> yeah yeah 
Uh, my friend uh, Casper Berry was like, a, he did really well in poker and he was over in Vegas. Uh, he went there for like a couple of weeks. He ended up staying there for three years and he lived off of his, mm -hmm. his poker income. Um, but he was very talented and he ended up consulting like the Bond film crew for Casino Royale and stuff like that. So oh. he, was on a, he was on a different level. Um, and and wow. <laughs> now I think of trading and I think of poker. I actually think poker's harder because because um it's a very similar thing but with poker you have to make a decision every like 90 seconds or 60 seconds and in right. trading you don't so so there, it's like this pressure that's added ah. to the whole thing and it's uh yeah that 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 adds a, a new level of complexity to it yeah cuz when i'm when i'm in a trade i don't have to call a raise exactly <laughs> necessarily <laughs> exactly. right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. once you have your position you can just sit on your hand yeah. and wait and see if it pays out or not exactly that oh, that's a fascinating observation yeah 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 so i settled you know i blew a lot of money uh, in the financial markets and then i i say i blew i i paid for a lot of lessons there and you then go. Uh, and then came good so how was the transition from poker to to options like how did that go about I think that was kind of a someone I knew was doing well or said they were doing well and it wasn't it wasn't really a an educated move to be honest it was something that I just saw oh do you know what maybe I'll try that and yeah I didn't last long you know it was something that I was just okay. <laughs> yeah it was a bit scary and I didn't understand it and I I still don't understand it really so <laughs> options uh well I understand it but I I just don't as you say, it's a, it's a little bit petrifying. It's a different, let's just say, it's a different animal. It's a different, definitely a different animal to, to what I'm used to. So, um, yeah, to really do options well, you got to have like a really high level understanding of volatility, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you could not necessarily need to have that in some of the other products. You just don't have to, yeah, you just don't have to have as much. Right. Yeah. So talk to me about some of the skills that cross over. That's always a fascinating conversation for me skills, when it yeah. comes to like the, the skills that make you successful at poker and the skills that make you successful at trading. There's a lot of crossover between the two, I think. I think there's a few skills that cross over in any kind of zero sum business where you are, you know, mm -hmm. you're beating the house basically and um, or beating someone else. Um, and that is process thinking. So So not necessarily thinking of, the end goal, but actually thinking of a plan and, a, and having the discipline mm -hmm. to stick to a consistent plan, knowing that there's a payoff over a long period of time. Uh, I think that's, you know, if you've got instant gratification, I don't think you're going to do, if you have this instant gratification thing uh, where you need instant gratification, I don't think that serves you well as a, as a, as a trader or, or speculator. Discipline, you know, consistency and, and having the discipline to be consistent. I think that's a, a great trait to have having a logical mindset you know a logical mind i don't think if you're away with the fairies and you you know you're into kind of woo woo type uh you know i don't think hippies do very well in the in the financial markets um i have seen that some people successfully trade the 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 signs like i think there's like an actual like person who's made decent money trading astrology astrology Right. Yes. Okay. But I bet when you, I bet when you get to the bottom of it, it is just a pattern that that they can, right, that they right. trade consistently. Right. It's the same. Yeah. With yeah. the moon and you know all of that kind of stuff. I think yeah, logical, logical brain, logical mind. I think uh, a decent IQ level. You know what I've seen people, the people that I've seen do really well are engineers and IT and military and people who are disciplined and people were process driven and people were you know just follow the rules that's that's kind of interesting because i think that there's a, another side of that especially the engineer in particular because when you're an engineer and you're trying to solve a problem like you're trying to build a bridge like you have a set number of calculations that go into that and there's no like if you build that bridge and you follow the math it will work. Yeah. And trading is not quite that certain. You have a higher percentage of probabilities that it will work, but it could still fail. Absolutely. And and I think that is one thing that as a trader, you just never, it's always there. Like you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you, and the question in the back of the mind is, is that it? You know, is this broken now? <laughs> is this stopped working now? You know, and, and I don't think that ever goes away. 
which is why I think it's so important to have things like back tested results and historical data that, that just kind of backs you up and supports your your mindset going forward because that's all you've got to rely on the probabilities of the future literally like padded by historical performance and what happened in the past right. and, and that just kind of keeps you sane and it's there as a comparison to what's happening now so if you've if you've had like a terrible week emotionally and you've had like i don't know had a row with your partner or something or you've had something go on and you've taken three losing trades you might take those three losing trades badly that week or worse than you usually might but if you can just be logical about it and go right what happened last year or what happened over the last 10 years you know and mm -hmm. and see that data it can just bring you back down to earth a little bit because you're being irrational it's such a good point that i think a lot of and i still struggle with it too is to to build up a data set that people say that uh, they don't have confidence in their setups or their trading strategies. And it's because that I think it's because they haven't done enough work proving it out. Like you don't have enough faith in that system. That's it. The faith. That's it. You, you, and that's all we've got to go on as traders, faith. And, and how do mm -hmm. you develop faith? Well, you need some history to say this is what's likely to happen. Um, and that's right. literally and the, all we've got to support our mindset. And the bigger and more robust that data set becomes, the more faith you'll have in it. And the easier it becomes to pull the trigger on that fourth, fifth, sixth losing trade in a row. Exactly. It's like a belief cycle, isn't it? It's it's so funny how easy it is to lose confidence too. Like you can spend months like back testing a system and have like two years worth of data and then you start trading it live and boom, you take that four losses in a row and suddenly now you're not thinking clearly. You're not taking the trades the same way you were the first two that you took. Yeah. Uh, it's and just so quick how you can lose that confidence. So like, how do you maintain that like in the moment? Is, yeah. I'm guessing you're not just pulling up the stats like, oh, okay, I took another trade. Let's go look at the stats and let's go boost my confidence. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, well, I mean, when you do test a system first or you do some uh, a decent sample size of pre, uh, you know, of, of historical backtesting, um, you kind of know what your maximum drawdown might be or the amount of months, the, the length of weeks that you might have gone mm -hmm. for a period of drawdown you, you might know your maximum monetary drawdown the maximum amount of points you know you, you can get all of this really valuable information and then if you ever go into that territory that's when you can kind of say well let me just compare you know let me let me see what happened uh, am i is this normal based on what i've tested so far but yeah it mm -hmm. still doesn't make it any easier when you when you do hit three four five losing trades in a row over time you get bet that gets easier because it's like oh, mm -hmm. yeah you know this is just what it is um but in the first you know in the first few years maybe or first couple of years that is difficult and you know all you want to do is is review yourself to make sure one you're performing flawlessly to your plan you know two you're in trades you should be in um three mm -hmm. you're not in trades that you shouldn't be in um <laughs> Four, you're managing trades correctly as per your plan. Uh, five, you're not mm -hmm. taking excessive loss. So if you've got a, a maximum loss limit, you know, are you going above that? And and if you can just review yourself and make sure, or another great thing is like in your trade journal, you can rate yourself from fearful to greedy. Like if you're mm -hmm. fearful of getting into a trade that day, because your, your, your emotions like fluctuate and you're, the chemicals in your body like fluctuate uh, week to week, month to month, and and you're gonna feel different. You're gonna take losses easier some weeks than you than you will other weeks. So, how do you stay consistent in that? Just score yourself like fearful. Like how fearful of you are you of taking a trade? Is is that a zero? How how greedy? How compelled do you feel to get into a trade? How desperate are you to like get into a trade or force a trade or revenge trade? Uh, score yourself a ten. And then maybe only take trades when you're like a five or a six. And, and that's a great way to, to maintain consistency in your emotions as well. That's a great point you just made there about, the, I always think of greed as when I'm in a position and I'm pushing take profits past right. the point that's reasonable. But there's another aspect of greed there that you just hit on the greed of I'm flat, but I want to be making I money. Want, 
I need to make money or make up for a loss that I took stupidly because I shouldn't have taken that trade and now I'm chasing I'm yeah. chasing it back. Yeah. Yeah, that's very common. That that happens more than I like to admit. <laughs> In fact, actually, uh, one of the things that I started kind of to piggyback on on what you just talked about there about grading yourself. One of the things that I'm starting to implement this week is to make note of all the emotional trades and separate them from the process trades. Right. Because I've been noticing that the the off script trades are really dragging down on the PL. And if you could just eliminate those, then suddenly you're a profitable trader. And yeah, right. if I can have that data or data set to back it up, then I think that'll make it it'll clue me in when I'm wanting to make an emotional trade if I can go and say, you know what? Last month this cost me, you know, fifty P and L or fifty yeah. percent of my P and L or whatever it was. Like if you can have those numbers or hard numbers to to reflect back or fall back upon. I think that just gives you confidence to continue doing what you know is right. Definitely. And and also the um you know what I like to do is is have a column in my in my trading journal that's um lost from fault and gained from fault because a lot of people will only put the losses from fault, you know, in their trading journal. But actually if you're winning more money than you should in your trading because you're not trading your plan flawlessly, that's not something to be celebrated. But a lot of people right. just brush it off. But actually, it's not a true reflection of the performance of your strategy. So you want to be tracking gains from fault and losses from fault. And, and your job as a trader is to like add those up, but make sure that's zero every month. And, and a lot of traders won't put the, the gains from fault. When you say from fault, you mean like a mistake? Or from a fault. trade yeah, that yeah. you shouldn't from have taken. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From your your error. Yeah, yeah. And not a lot of people do that. Yeah, no, that's such a. I, I love that idea. We call it gross gross performance discrepancy. That, <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> with that, did we touch on shiny objects? I think I heard you mention shiny object syndrome. Yeah, shiny objects. Yeah, I mean that's what trading is at the moment. I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that is something that a lot of us struggle with in the beginning is. We have a hard time settling into any one thing. Like you, you explore an idea, you take it for a while, you start to have some s struggles with it. And then just before you're ready to figure out the nuance, boom, you're on to the next thing. <laughs> and it can be, it can be very detrimental because you never actually sit down and finish anything. You're always on to the next thing and the next thing, the next thing. Absolutely. And the the way that I um I try and explain this or warn people against this is thinking of the whole J curve model. So like. If you imagine when you open a coffee shop, you know, that's a business model where before you've even opened the doors, you spend a lot of time, effort and money training staff, decorating the place, buying all the gear, setting up the refurbishment, you know, doing the decoration, um, you know, setting up all the contracts, the employment contracts, all the coffee and everything. Mm -hmm. And then on day one, when you open the door, that's when you start getting some of that money back and that's called a J curve because you're, you know, you're out of pocket. And then as soon as the door opens, you start to bring in the profit. And because the price of coffee is so ridiculous, you, <laughs> right. you're going to have like exponential profits, right? Yeah. Um, same with like software models and apps and things like that. If you do that, a lot of people do that with trading. Mm -hmm. They put all the time and effort and, and money into learning s some system. And then they'll go, do you know what? That looks better. And they'll go to some greasy trading forum where someone's got some confidence to tout that their system's better than everyone else's and you know they'll they'll follow that and guess what they they start the whole j curve again and they never actually get it's like a u curve mm -hmm. <laughs> they never actually get out the you know they never get to the j um but it, it happens all the time it, it happens all the time and what i've found is the only system you know you're never going to just get someone's system and trade it happily into the sunset. It just doesn't work like that. There's, there's thousands of strategies that you can go and trade, but you can give the same strategy to two people and one will make money and one won't. And the reality is they've got different personalities, different eyes, different, you know, just different lifestyles, different commitments. And mm -hmm. you have to find something that firstly resonates with you and you understand. So you say, oh, okay, well, I can, I can grasp this breakout strategy or I can grasp support and I'll trade off of support or something. And then once you're happy with that, you have to just make that your own. You have to become a system developer mm -hmm. as a trader. And that's where you're going to make money. It's not buying the next thing off the shelf and going to 
Pip Daddy and going to <laughs> trade their system and you know all these <laughs> crazy forums. It's every every successful trader I've met has has gone back to the first system they learned and made that profitable after going around the houses. That's, and I believe that's because they found something that resonated. That's first so of all. fascinating. Yeah, the, it's almost like the first year or two is like supercharged information gathering. You're just trying to consume as much as you possibly can get your hands on. Yeah. And then there comes a point where you have to stop taking information in. You got to actually try to process everything that you've learned. Totally. I, I a lot of people come to me and they say, "Oh, I've heard of babypips.com. Should I start there?" And I say, "Look, but do you know babypips.com?" It sounds familiar. It's a forex site, right? It's like a it's basically like a it's like a resource center for traders where yeah. you can learn everything. Like every terminology, mm -hmm. every single indicator, every strategy, right? And and I I say to people, if you didn't understand English, and your goal was to have a conversation with someone in English, mm -hmm. would your strategy be to read every word in the Oxford Dictionary and learn every word in the Oxford, Oxford Dictionary? No, because even <laughs> if you learn every word in the Oxford Dictionary, you still wouldn't be able to string a sentence together uh, because you wouldn't know how to communicate. And it's the same with trading. And Mark Douglas says this in Trading in the Zone. He says, People think that the more you know about the markets, the better trader you are. But that is a misconception. You have to mm -hmm. learn enough to move you forward in the direction that you're going in. Not if you learn everything, you end up with paralysis analysis. Like you, you, one one piece of knowledge <laughs> is telling you to go short, and one you know one indicator is telling you to go long, and uh, it's hard enough. You know, you can look at a chart for five minutes and find a hundred reasons to go long and a hundred reasons to go short at any second, right? So, if you're <laughs> if you've got too much knowledge, it's gonna it's gonna paralyze you for sure. So, so how would you recommend someone go about learning trading then? Because uh, it's not about just learning the words or the vocabulary. You have to learn the construction of the sentences and uh, the difference between adverbs and verbs and all that. Yeah. So, like, what's the What's the right, right path then in trading? So yeah, that's a that's a great question. I, I would first of all, I would I would stress the importance of understanding that there is not a better indicator than another indicator, or there is someone else doesn't see structure better than you. Um, mm -hmm. Structure is very subjective, so you you spot it with your eyes, and that's where you're going to be most consistent when you can see it, not looking at someone else or asking someone else or thinking that there's some golden goose indicator because there just isn't right so right instead think about understanding a few concepts that you can use as confluence for a setup so under obviously you want to understand the basic terminology and how to read a price chart and how to read price and what a candlestick is and where the high low and open close is and you know you want to understand all that stuff and you want to understand how to navigate a chart I think structure is important. So support and resistance, I think that's a, that's a key uh, ingredient to, to technical analysis. Um, mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm coming purely from a, a technical trader here, so uh, I'll be biased towards that. I don't believe that you can make money in trading purely fundamentals. I've never seen it done. But, but mm -hmm. support and resistance is a, is, a, uh, is a great element. And then pick a couple of indicators you know some stochastics um rsi or um macd or you know some exponential moving averages or just pick a couple and just compile them and see if you can get confluence on them both when you're looking for certain setups so it's like okay we're at support there's one point uh, we're at major support there's two points we're at you know we've got divergence on an on a macd that's three points and we've got exponential moving averages crossing and that's four points so you can kind of create a grading system for your trading that's how you want to mm -hmm. think about it and the grading system the higher the grade then you can be dynamic with your position size your entries your risk your management your target taking you know you can you can kind of depending on how sure thing the trade is you can be mm -hmm. more aggressive with targets or more right. tight with stops or um so, so that's a key thing. And then finally, I would say, learn some price action patterns, like when we're seeing deceleration just before the move, uh, if a double top forms or something like that, 
and then learn some um, candlestick formations. So things like high test, tweezer tops, you know, doji candles, things like that. Just learn a few of those and don't just go and mm -hmm. trade them everywhere. Just compile all these things that I've just said into one and, and then start to go, right, that's got everything. So that's a great setup. And have the discipline to only take great setups. Don't don't take low quality setups. Like, why are you <laughs> taking low quality setups? <laughs> That's a wow. Well, I would kind of want to ask that question. I mean, you're you're the you focus a lot on the emotional or mental side of things. Like just judging from the content on your YouTube channel. So, like, what is it that makes us pull the trigger on those setups that aren't a plus? The 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 feeling of being in a trade, the need to be in a trade, because I think it comes back to. There's a few things it comes back to, but I think one of the main ones is one fear of missing out um mm -hmm. you know any trade will do because i can i'm in a trade and i can there's a chance i can make money in actual fact i would i would advise that you try to see everything wrong with a trade setup and mm -hmm. try and talk yourself out of trades rather than talk yourself into trades because if you can just see every every reason not to take a trade you're halfway there. You're going to find some good setups because when you go, oh, do you know what? I can't see a reason not to be in this one. Truly. Longtime fans of the show should be familiar with the lender formerly known as Sue Pullen, and I'm pleased to announce that she's back, fresh off a of rebrand and ready to help as Sue Mackey. Sue is a certified mortgage advisor at Fairway Independent Mortgage, an equal housing lender who focuses on finding the right product for you and your needs. She has over 20 years of experience helping thousands of homeowners. Whether it's purchasing, refinancing, or even a reverse mortgage, Sue will help. Sue's licensed in 36 states now, so reach out and let Sue Mackey it happen for you. The best way to reach her is just give her a call at 520-977-7904 or in an email, spullen at fairwaymc.com. Fairway Independent Mortgage has an MLS number of 2289. Sue Mackey has an MLS number of 206048. That email again, S-P-U-L-L-E-N at fairwaymc.com. And that phone number is 520-977-7904. Shoot Sue an email and let her know she needs to update that address. That's mm -hmm. probably a good setup. That's probably a decent setup. And the other reason is we come from this, uh, you know, from, from an evolutional standpoint of exchanging time for money and clocking in and clocking out. And you have to feel active to feel like you're meaningful or doing something. Um, mm -hmm. and, and going back to your question earlier about, you know, they, they jump from system to system. One of the biggest problems I find is when, they, when traders start, they're doing a lot of work and putting in a lot of screen time because they're testing, learning, looking through the charts, applying soon as they're ready to go live. And they're really, you know, there's hardly any setups and they're like, oh great, I've got all this time on my hand. And, and, and all of a sudden they've gone from <laughs> right. spending like eight hours at the charts to one hour or two hours. And now it's like, oh, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. Perhaps I'm not doing enough. And then they start looking for things that aren't there and they get the, you know, and then they start taking lower quality setups. Um, that's a dangerous territory to be in. So I think, you know, that's, that's probably a, a big one. I think that actually kind of ties in with the, the next thing I wanted to ask you about. And it has to do with a tweet that I saw, and I can't remember who it was, and I'm sorry for whoever put this out because it was such a great comment. But it said that the reason that most traders go broke is not because they can't make money, it's because they can't make money fast enough. <laughs> and I think that kind of ties in with some of what you're saying right there. Like, yeah, we have setups that for the most part that it probably has some positive expectancy, but it's all the other trades that we take that eat away at that bottom Just line. Eat away. Yeah. I always say, like, patience pays the bills. And, um, it really does. And, and what you'll find yourself doing is if you take low quality setups, you'll just give your profits back to the market. And it's not just your profit. You know, you, you're, you're, you've got <laughs> broker fees. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Well, you get, yeah, everything you've earned and more, but it's already geared against you anyway, because you're paying spreads and, you know, broker commissions and rollover fees and all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like in business when someone's stealing like five dollars from the till every day it's like a death by a thousand cuts you know you don't realize <laughs> right, right. where the money's going and then all of a sudden your, your account's depleted and you don't know where to start but actually it was just those <laughs> stupid trades 
<laughs> I think we've uh, had a day when we were like, oh, I finished up, you know, like 30, 40 points. It wasn't a great day, but at least it was green. And then you go back and look at your commission. You're like, oh. <laughs> No, 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 actually, I lost money yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And look, I'm not, I'm not like professing to be like a genius or anything or, or the best trader in the world. I'm far from that, but I, uh, I've seen it, all, like, I've seen a lot and, and I've done it all as well myself. So, um, I speak with, with experience. It's funny that, uh, it seems like the successful traders you talk to, they're always very quick to mention that they've not figured anything out yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, do you ever, do you ever master it? I don't think so. It, you, how can you? Right. I mean, that's the goal, but it's yeah, very I'm never going to master it. it. Never, <laughs> yeah. never, never. Talk to me about, uh, like some of the things that are mechanisms that you have in place to, to keep you focused during the trading session on those, those key trades that you want to take and not the other ones. During the trading session, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, While you're sitting down at the computer, yeah. Yeah. So one of the fortunate positions that I'm in is I actually, you know, I, I open my charts and I trade in front of other people. So there's some traders in my community that I trade, you know, just on a call with. And uh, mm -hmm. that helps because it's like being on a prop firm or it's like being in an actual team. Um, mm -hmm. And there's some accountability to that because, I, you know, you know what it's like on your own. It's like, well, no one knows if right. I just take this trade. No one knows if I, you know, it's just me. You know, who cares? Um, so there's some accountability there. That's great. But but from my own, my own accountability, my self accountability, I've just got a, a strict set of rules that I follow, and I've, I've learned over the years that if I don't, if I deviate from this this plan, then I'm I don't know the outcome, and I don't want to be in a position where I don't know the outcome. So I just do that all year. And then around Christmas time, I do some optimization stuff and some, you know, on my strategies to see where I'm leaving money on the table. And, and, and then I, and that's it. And then I apply that, um, quite conservatively over a six month period. So for instance, I monitor, uh, the level of aggression. So how much money I'm leaving on the table, how aggressive I can be. And I've got a formula in my spreadsheet that can tell me to what degree I can become more aggressive with a certain setup. Mm -hmm. If at Christmas when I'm doing my analysis, it says, well, I can be, you know, 2% more aggressive on that particular strategy. I won't be 2% more aggressive. I'll just turn the dial 1% or like half 0 of that, 0.5%. Yeah. 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 Because I don't want to make any major adjustments. It's like, if you tweak too much at once, you don't know what worked. And, and that's a very, <laughs> it's like the thermostat analogy. From a troubleshooting background, yeah, like you change one variable and you check and see if you fix the problem. You can't, you can't change more than one thing because you don't know what fixed it. If you don't know what fixed it, you can't exactly. actually stop it from happening again. <laughs> exactly, and that and that takes a discipline as well. And it's I always use a thermostat analogy. You know, people that have got the thermostat and they go, "Turn the heating off, I'm hot," or "Turn the heating on, I'm cold." And and it's like this <laughs> five degree to thirty degree thing. And it's actually like if you just tweak it half a degree. Yes, you've got to wait for that temperature to stop fluctuating and get to a certain level, but you'll be comfortable forever. Like, you know, and, and people don't want to do that tweak. It's just like, oh, no, it's hot. It's cold. It's hot. It's cold. And it takes a discipline. It takes because you have to be patient. That's why patience pays the bills. Yeah, but people do that. <laughs> <laughs> mm, let's see. What else do I got on here? Oh, talk to me about mindset and money. This is something that I kind of stumbled onto recently with Rich Friesen's book. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, no. He's a psychologist trained, but he, uh, old pit trader from um, like San Francisco. Right. Yeah. His book was a private conversation with money. And a lot of it was talking about or helping you understand the baggage that you have when it comes to money and your relationship with it. Yeah. I mean, it plays a, it plays a massive part if you've got a poor money mindset, but, but, just kind of taking a step back, I think when people approach trading, uh, going back to the first thing we said on this podcast was they approach it for because they need money, uh, you know, and they mm -hmm. think that 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 trading is the vehicle that's going to make them money. But it's a very complex skill and it demands decision making process, you know, it, 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 a very fast decision making process. It demands logical thinking. There was a, uh, a study done in southern India. Uh, they interviewed, they did the test on 56 cities in southern India uh, on the farmer's mm -hmm. IQ. And, um, and when there was a, a drought and the farming was low and the trade was low, 
their IQ dropped by up to 30 points. Really? Which kind of, and then, yeah. And, and, and they were worried about, you know, feeding and eating and, you know, basically survival. So when their survival, when they're in a level of poverty, their, their IQ dropped. And then when the farming was booming again and the, you know, the monsoon season passed and it, and it was all, you know, the crops were growing and it was great. Um, their IQ raised. So the thing with trading is you need a decent IQ. You know, it demands some logical thinking of you. And the approach that you're taking, if you're, if you're struggling financially and trading is your first step to try and make money, the very approach that you're taking in the situation that you're in is the thing that's going to stop you from being able to master trading. Hmm. So it's like a catch-22. Um, you cannot be a successful trader if you're in that position. Wow. Uh, and, and that's fascinating, right? I'm still blown away by the idea that your IQ or your cognitive processes are, will fluctuate based on what I would assume is an external stressor. Yeah. When you go into fight or flight mode, yeah. It's, it's survival, right? So it's your, your amygdala. Your, the amygdala is your part of the brain, which is, is your, it's the oldest part of your brain design. It's basically binary thinking. It just needs to survive. You know, it needs to avoid pain mm -hmm. and move towards pleasure at every situation. Like, I'm sure everyone's heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, you know, it's all built off of this stem. Hmm. So once your survival is taken care of, you then calm that part of your brain and you start to unlock creative thinking and decisions. And you can think about more things at once than just, you know, run mm -hmm. or uh, hide. <laughs> right. and, and, and again, you see the, the people with the most poverty also have the most kids mm -hmm. so it's been proven that the people that are in the most poverty have the most kids and that is because it's that whole survival thing you know Going fight, for pleasure eat yeah. mate yeah just like breed you know it's very animalistic mindset so that a bit of a tangent here but that is kind of something that is going to affect you going in so i always say trading is a money growing skill not necessarily a money making skill mm -hmm. you know go into trading when you've when you're not thinking about it being your primary moneymaker. Uh, and, and again, that's a process way of thinking. It's like, right, if I do this over a period of time, then it, then it will, be, then it will inevitably become a money-making skill. But until then, I'm going to treat it as a money-growing skill. Because if you can prove that you can do 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever it is, you can still do that when you've got a big loaded account. You know, it's, a, it's the same skill. <laughs> So just, just think about the percentage growth. It is, but I think we've all also been there too. Like when the day when you're running well for, you know, a good period of time and you're like, okay, I think it's time to up the size now. And then the first time you do that, and then the first time you sit through a trade and you see that yeah. drawdown or the way that PNL moves, then boom, you're right back. It feels like it's square one sometimes. That happened to me when I first started trading professionally. And I, and I say that because that was the time when, I'd funded an account and I'd done all the hard work and the back testing and everything. And I was, I was treating it as a professional trader. I funded my account with enough for it to be very painful, but not enough to cripple me. Mm -hmm. Um, and four weeks I was in a drawdown for, and, and it, you know, on the fifth week I went in, I, I went into profit, new profit in my account. And it was only at that point that I really trusted what I was doing hundred percent mm -hmm. up until that point. I didn't, I still had doubts. I still didn't trust what was going on. And luckily I was in a community that were like, you know, just keep going, stick, stick with the it, plan, stick with know, it, keep, keep, stick with it, stick with it. And I was with some other traders that would also in a drawdown and just come out. And I was like, right, okay, I've just got to do it. You know, I, I've got to be prepared to lose everything in my account. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what I was, that's where I just went, right, let's go. And in the fifth week I went into new profits and that's, that's kind of where you have a, a turning point in, in your mind. Um, but going back to like other mindset stuff, I think if you've got negative views towards money, I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes that comes up unexpectedly because you think, oh, I'm, I want to make money. I want to be a trader. So you think that you don't have any negative views towards money. But I can tell you that when I started doing really well, there were family members that it, it, trading, I learned more about myself trading than I have in any other 
self-development i hate that the truth <laughs> yeah yeah and it forces you to grow in in ways that you you just don't even expect and um when i started doing really well trading i extended family would start to you know not talk to me or invite me places or you know oh. friends started oh not, wow really yeah, yeah 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 they start seeing a success and it's like oh okay well you know i'm I don't know. I don't know what their perception is, but that can have an effect because if you haven't said, right, I'm going to learn to trade, I'm going to make a load of money and I'm deserved of that money because I've put all this work in and, you know, I deserve this money and I, I can do this with it and that with it and that with it. If you don't take the time to do that, what happens is it's like lottery winners. They win the lottery and then overnight, they're trying to buy acceptance from people, buy friends. You know, I am still normal, you know, still, you know, mm -hmm. have this, have that, buy this, buy that. And they try to get rid of it as quickly as possible because they don't feel worthy of having it. So what happens is when you get success, you, you have to, you have to be prepared for certain people to not look at you the same way. And if you, if you're not prepared, you will start to back down a little bit and ease off the gas a little bit and you'll start not pursuing it as much as you did or, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. You know, maybe I should just do the normal thing. And that's all because of money. That's something Rich talks about a lot is the fear of success that most yeah. people don't realize is there, but it's exactly what you just said. Like, what, what are you going to lose when you become successful? Your subconscious knows. Yeah, <laughs> You may not have knows. thought about it, but yeah, you're going to lose, you're going to lose friends. You're going to not be able to, there's certain things or time that you have available that's not going to be available anymore. There's yeah. there's a lot of things that you have to really think about and accept that you're not going to have them anymore if you do have success. Yeah. And and just like when, let's just say that you become a, a tra like for me, I was, went from going out to an office every day to mm -hmm. being at home every day, right? So here's, here's yeah. something. Um, when I'm out at work in the office, dad and husband Jason can be out till midnight and he's a hero because he works hard and he's at the office and he's, he's such a hard <laughs> right. worker. Right. When I come yep. home and I, and I, I step into the office for half an hour in my home office. Oh, he's ignoring the family. Oh, he's choosing to ignore the family. Right. So it's like, ah. so, wow. You know, what's happened? I, I've, I've been working out in an office till midnight or 10 PM every night. Now I'm just going in my office in the home for like half an hour and I'm, and I'm ignoring everyone well you know. that's what it so that's what i feel like though sometimes like yeah i'd like to spend more time in the evenings sometimes like working on certain projects but then like because, oh, that's the time that i spend <laughs> with my wife like i don't want to i don't want to give that up right right oh, so those sorts of things yeah. as well yeah those sorts of things and then all your friends are at work because they've still got normal jobs and all of you know <laughs> yeah. your kids are at school <laughs> and you know you're going to visit the fridge too often because you'd be bored and there's there's <laughs> And your eyes are going to, you're going to need glasses because your eyes are getting strained on the charts. And there's all these like non-glamorous things that start coming out of the woodwork mm -hmm. that you didn't foresee because you never took the time. You just had a fantasy about what it would look like. And the bigger the fantasy that you have about what it might look like, the bigger fall, you know, the, the bigger disappointment is going to be mm -hmm. there because there's going to be things that you just don't that you're blind to until they happen. And that can then have a negative effect on your trading because you're like, oh, I associate trading with, you know, this. Lambos. Uh, yeah. And... Or, or, or you stop yeah. trading because you, you, or you take your foot off the gas because you associate trading with arguments with people at home or mm. argument, you know, people think you're a gambling if I make too much money, then people are going to be coming and asking for money. Yeah, and I don't want to like deal that. with that or have to say no. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's fascinating, isn't it? It's so disappointing to see the way that trading is marketed and the way people get sucked into it. And it's it's the complete opposite of the message that people need to hear. Like, if you want to get into trading, like you need to be prepared to spend several years, probably. Yep. Not only learning about charts and the markets and how you know price moves and and all that, but you're also going to have to learn a whole lot about yourself. Yep. And how you react in certain scenarios and then try to figure out why you react that way. So that way you can stop reacting that way. <laughs> and <laughs> it is so true. And guess what? You're going to have to actually enjoy it and be fascinated by it. Otherwise, if you're doing it because, you know, some 
idiot on YouTube or or Instagram <laughs> right. uh, is you know saying he's doing it, <laughs> you're not probably going to stick to it. You know, it's because it's, it you have to enjoy it. Every trader I know does well. Actually wakes up in the morning and is fascinated by the charts and and look you know they look forward to doing the pre market on a Sunday and you know, it's it's just a way of life. It's not. Mm-hmm. And and that's the same with every every successful person. You know, if you're trying to do something you're not interested in, that's gonna it's gonna be very hard <laughs> ride. Especially when you yeah. talk about like a field like trading or poker is another good example with like the edges and the margins are so small, and you're competing against some of the best people in the world. Think, yeah. You got to be a be step good. above in order to <laughs> you be find good, your yeah. place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so that's something yeah. that I think a lot of people don't want to even think about. You kind of have no, to. That's that's a great point, man. I think, like, yeah, your edge is tiny. You're exploiting mm-hmm. a tiny edge, and you've you've got to keep on top of it as well. Another thing is, like, people think, oh, they pick a strategy. Oh, this strategy is a good one, and they just trade it into the sunset. It it requires constant work to monitor mm-hmm. that thing and tweak it, and it never ends. Like, you're not just gonna switch on a robot and it just does its thing. <laughs> right. uh, I've I've met some pretty talented coders and you know, EAs and all these bots that they've got, but, it, oh, okay, so how do you manage it? Oh, yeah, we still have to manage the bot. You know, it, it's, yeah. you're never, ever going <laughs> to, <laughs> so you better love it. Like, you better love it. Otherwise, do something else. Put your money into something else like right. that you do enjoy. Uh, let's see, we're getting kind of close to the end here. Before we do that, I want to spend a little bit of time talking <laughs> about Forex. Like, why is Forex the thing that you found that that spoke to you? What was it about it that you really like? Initially, yeah, initially, I think the uh, well, there was the leverage, there was the 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 hours, you know, the the fact that it was open twenty four hours a day, mm-hmm. five days a week, the accessibility of it, the low cost of it. Um, I mean, that that was it really. The fact that there was so many markets, the fact the fact that there was, I understood currency mm-hmm. rather than looking at individual stocks. And I mean, I I do. I do value invest in stocks and I, I invest in startups and I understand the ins and outs of, of stocks, but I trading them. Um, right. No, you know, well, every I, stock has its own personality too. Right. So you have to like exactly. learn every stock's personality. Whereas with like, especially like futures or trading indices, you only have to learn the one. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, currency pairs have personalities too, but they're, yeah. they're just a little bit more easy to, to, manage um and and yeah i just I, I just resonated with it more that was all so there's nothing like mechanical with how the products trade necessarily it was just more about the opportunities and the accessibility mechanical yeah yeah i think it was yeah yeah um and, and i was already investing in like value investing in stocks um mm-hmm. forex was just something that i guess it was just an introduction from someone that said like if you want to trade trade forex and that was it. I, I just went in that direction, spent a lot of money, and <laughs> that was it. If someone wants to learn uh, forex, where's a where's a good resource to to kind of kick them off on the right path? Um, forex trading, yeah. I mean, I, I see that you got some uh, good stuff on your YouTube video. If you want to, you want to, yeah. I, that? I was, I, I recently, you know, I was kind of getting tired of all the questions, so I, I decided to put out a video series on my YouTube channel called Trading for Beginners. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sat down and I thought, well, how can I share as much information as possible where they'll have minimal questions as possible and they can just go and do this stuff without, you know, they've got everything they need to go and be a trader. And I sat down over a a couple of weeks and recorded this series called Trading for Beginners. And um, I think it got launched last January and it's like 3.7 million views thousands of great comments on there now so it's like um it did what i hoped it would do and um i yeah go and check that out that that would be a great and let me know what you think of it there's that one and it looked like you had another like 16 part like introduction to forex on there too that i think people probably want to check out as well yeah there's, there's there's a few series but but i think if you just look at that that trading for beginners i think there's part one and part two and i think you'll uh you know, that's, that's a great place to start. And then after that, you know, shoot me a message, ask me a question, but hopefully you won't have any. <laughs>
All right. Well, talk, talk to me about the the podcast then too. How long have you been the doing podcast that for? I started, um, I started writing a newsletter in 2018 after I was spending a lot of time networking around entrepreneurs. And, um, I realized that a lot of them, I, I mean, I, I was kind of retired at that point and, um, a lot of them were very good at making money, but terrible at managing money. They had no money. Like they, they were making hundreds hmm. of thousands every year and, and they weren't, actually they never had anything that to lifestyle. show for it. yeah yeah so right i started yeah. asking questions about what they were doing and investing and all this kind of stuff and they had no personal finance structure or no wealth strategy or anything really but yeah wow. yeah so i started <laughs> uh writing about what i'd done from age 21 to age 29 and i just put it in a newsletter and one day someone said could you do you do an audible version of this because i'm i'm dyslexic so i basically just started reading the newsletter to a to a microphone mm -hmm. and it became a podcast and when we launched it it went to number one in three categories on on apple Podcasts. we knocked off like kiyosaki and tony robbins and gary v and all these oh, uh, it was okay. crazy and, and i nice. i was like nice. wow this must actually be of value like there must be a lot of people that are getting value from this so um we carried it on and uh it's been a thing ever since and it's called always free and it is it is about wealth creation and financial empowerment in general so i share everything from personal finance to investing to mindset to lifestyle growth to trading to you know income um, business all that kind of stuff so it's everything mm -hmm. wealth uh wealth related and i assume that does it have a website or is that uh, just on any of the uh, distributors i think it does have a website yeah alwaysfreepodcast.com and uh, you can go and pick That'd whatever uh whatever platform you want to listen to it on. But I would definitely listen to it on the podcast platforms and not the website because there's like a, yeah, there's, the website's just there for, for the sake of it. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll link the, uh, I'll link the, yeah, the podcast website it. and then they can, they can pick it from there. Awesome. I appreciate that. Well, Jason, I gotta, I want to say thank you for, for the time today. And I know this was kind of a quick one That's that we threw great. together here. Uh, I got your, your bio from, from your handle there. I was like, yeah, I that guy. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So thank you. Uh, thank you for, for your, your contributions here, putting this together so quickly. Uh, if you enjoyed today's conversation, you still want more, check out our guest directory. You can browse all the amazing people we've had the pleasure of speaking with in the past. And if you want to learn more about Jason here and how to trade Forex, make sure you check out that YouTube channel. It is packed full of tutorial videos. I promise you that. Uh, also visit the podcast, alwaysfreepodcast.com. Make sure all those links in the episode description, just asking for you to turn those hyperlinks purple. <laughs> Back with another exciting episode. But until then, if you got something useful out of today's conversation, let me know. And if you hated it, thank you for torturing yourself to the bitter end. You've earned the right to hit that thumbs down button <laughs> twice. <laughs>